very entertaining. And uh, last night's walk-off in the 11th inning, a uh, home run by uh, that freeze guy. He was the hero. Well, Ralph Bronca joins us on the telephones right now. He played for the Brooklyn Dodgers. He uh, served up a home run in the 1951 World Series to Bobby Thompson, and he joins us on the telephones right now to talk about that and more. Mr. Bronca, thanks for coming on. Good morning. Good morning, Al. How are we doing? Ralph, in Massachusetts here, the shot heard around the world refers to the first shot fired in the Revolutionary War in Concord, Massachusetts. About Concord, Mass., right. About 20 minutes from where we are here. In baseball, the shot heard around the world is a very different meaning, and you were a part of that, and after all of these years, 1951, why did you decide to write that book, A Moment in Time Now? Well, truthfully, I was talking to, to a good friend, Faye Vincent, about oh, maybe two years ago, and he says, you should write some memoirs for your family and your nieces and nephew. I've got like 32 nieces and nephews and two daughters. They want to know what went on in your life way back when in the 40s and 50s. You started an all-star game. You started the first game of a World Series. He said, and you were a hell of a Young pitcher, nobody knows that. All he knows you through a home run pitch. A three-time All-Star who won a career-high 21 games in 1947 at the age of 21 years old, but for the longest time, just known as that guy who threw that pitch to Bobby Thompson, that walk-off home run in 1951, sending the Giants to the World Series, and of course that famous call of... And that call, since you reminded me, that call, it was the Giants coming from 13 and a half behind. New York's the media capital of the world. And so that call, combined with the rivalry between those two teams, the neighborhood rivalry, I think that's why it got so renowned and got the, whoever named it the shot heard around the world must have been a revolutionary war buff. Ralph, for the longest time, you knew that the Giants were stealing signs. Why didn't you say anything? Why didn't you let it be known? You know... I guess some something inside of me was that, you know, I didn't want to moan and be a crybaby or a sore loser. And in sports, you know, you have to learn to win graciously and lose graciously. And, you know, I, I never really, like you say, dwelled on it. And I yeah, just was that I was not going to break that news. I wanted somebody else to break the news before I talked about it. And so I kept quiet till Josh Prager's article in the Wall Street Journal which was January 31st, 2001, came out. And I talked to Thompson that day and asked him, had he seen the article? And he said, yes. I said, how do you feel? He said, I'm okay. He said, I guess you feel exonerated. I said, no, but my tongue is loosened. Now I could talk about it and say, they stole a pennant. Speaking with Ralph Branca, A Moment in Time is the name of his book, An American Story of Baseball, Heartbreak, and Grace. The Brooklyn Dodger great who gave up Bobby Thompson shot heard around the world, available at bookstores everywhere. Now, in Boston here, Ralph, Bill Buckner, who was called a goat for many years for letting that ball go through his legs in the 86 World Series. Have you ever spoken to Bill Buckner about that play? Yes, I had. Because Bill was a good friend of Bobby V. Bobby V is my son-in-law, Bobby Valentine, so... Uh, you know, I saw Billy at Bobby's house one time, and I said, Billy, you know, the ball took a little tricky hop, and you had the bad ankle. I said, the manager should have had a, a defensive play, and I know you, you want to play, and I know how competitive you are, but it was his job to do what was right for the team effort and put, and Billy was a great hit. I think he's got like 2,800 hits. Yeah, he does. So he was, he was a great player and a very, very competitive guy. I think he's finally gotten over it. Well, the World Series in 2004 and then again in 2007, that definitely helped after the 86-year curse was broken. The last thing I want to ask you about, uh, Ralph Bronca, is uh, you played with Jackie Robinson, and you were there when Jackie Robinson broke into the league in 1947, breaking that color barrier. And not only did you play with him, on opening day 1947, you lined up on the field right next to Jackie Robinson while other players on the Brooklyn Dodgers refused to. Well, you know, it didn't, didn't matter to me. I grew up on a street in Mount Vernon, which I call the United Nations. And blacks live right next door to me. So when Jackie came, you know, I w walked home to shook his hand and said, welcome aboard. My only thought was, I hope this guy can play good enough to help us win the pennant. Well, needless to say, he played well, that is for sure. And uh, Jackie Robinson really had to endure a lot during that first year. And you got to see it firsthand. Absolutely. In fact, when I got home after standing next to him, my brother John said, are you crazy? I said, what are you talking about? He said, you stood next to Jackie. I said, so what? He said, suppose the guy was a lousy shot and missed by three feet. He got a lot of death threats. He did. And you know what? 
as you said, he performed admirably. You know, he hit 297, not bad for a rookie. Led the league in stolen bases and performed well, you know. I mean, there was a lot of pressure on him because if he didn't perform well, that made it delay the start of blacks into baseball. But, you know, he played well enough to be rookie of the year. Ralph, thanks a lot for taking the time, man. Pleasure to talk with you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.